Okay, this integral is the square root of 1 minus x squared, and this is going to involve trig substitution. So when we see the square root of 1 minus x squared, we can rewrite it as 1 squared minus x squared. And we know that x equals sine theta. And then we take the derivative of this, and we get dx equals cosine theta d theta. OK? Now we can take that information, and we can rewrite our integral equals the integral, the square root of 1 minus sine theta squared cosine theta d theta, because our cosine theta d theta is dx. All right, now let's just clean this up a little bit. So we've got equals the integral, the square root of 1 minus, we can rewrite sine theta squared as sine squared theta, and then it's still cosine theta d theta. Now if we take a look at the radical here, we notice this little thing right here. We can use trig identity. And that says that cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. So the whole radical can be rewritten. The integral, the square root of cosine squared theta times cosine theta d theta. Now looking at the square root here, we see that inside the square root, we have cosine squared. So we can get rid of the square root. So now we have the integral of cosine theta times cosine theta d theta. All right, now we can take these two cosines and we can multiply them together. So we end up with the integral of cosine squared theta d theta. Looking at this, we can use power reducing, which says that cosine squared theta equals one half times one plus cosine two theta. So using that information, we now have one half times the integral of one plus cosine two theta d theta. Now all we have to do is take the derivative with respect to theta. We can do that. We'll just move this right up here. So that equals one half. Well, the integral of one is theta. plus the integral of cosine 2 theta is 1 half sine 2 theta plus c. And now again, we can use the double angle formula for this part right here, double angle, which says that sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta times cosine theta. So that now gives us 1 half times theta plus 1 half 
times 2 sine theta cosine theta plus c. Then we can reduce this sum, get rid of our twos here. That gives us 1 half times theta plus sine theta times cosine theta plus c. Now what we want to do is we want to take a look at our right angle triangle. So let's have a look at that right here. That's our right angle triangle. And we have our theta here. And since we use sine theta, that means we're going to use opposite over hypotenuse. So our opposite is going to be x. Our hypotenuse is going to be 1, using these terms. And then this bottom part right here is going to be this whole thing right here. So we have the square root of 1 minus x squared. So we know sine theta equals x. And then if we solve this to get theta by itself, we end up with theta equals arc sine x. OK, now we need to find cosine of theta. We know that x equals sine of theta, but now we need cosine of theta. So looking at this, we know that cosine of theta equals the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, which is the same as the square root of 1 minus x squared. So now we can take this information and plug it into this to get our final answer. So we have 1 half times, well, our theta is arc sine x, arc sine x plus our sine of theta, sine of theta is x, times our cosine of theta, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared. All of that is plus c, and that is our final answer to this trig substitution integral. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.